Alan. Alan, Alan Quartermain. It's six o'clock. I know. Yeah. Did you look everywhere? I know you can't find it, but look again. I really need it. You got to bring it. All right. It's not an impossible mission. You can do this. All right, fine. I guess I would just have to choose to accept it. And um, hopefully the phone won't self-destruct. I'll just do it barefoot. All right, bye. So, I will do it barefoot. Welcome to Living Figuratively, the 15th episode with, Ma with me, Judy Takas, your host. Uh, today's episode is called Someday My Prince Will My Prince Will Come. Living Figuratively is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative arts? Each week I will introduce you to pieces from my collection and pieces of my own and show you how you can live with figurative art and love it and have it fulfill your life. Today, the episode is called Someday My Prince Will Come. And I'm not talking about the prince that is supposed to be looking for the other shoe. I'm talking about art prints, which I've filled my living room here with some art prints. Um, let's kick it off with a little glossary of terms. People get the word prince confused all the time because prince can mean this and prince can mean that. Um, you've probably heard me talk about the word gicle from past episodes where I say I can make gicles of any of my paintings for significantly uh, reduced price from what an original oil painting would be. Basically, a gicle is a fancy name for a photographic print. Um, photographic prints can be printed on photo paper, and you can get a little four by six photo that you know we're all familiar with. Uh, they can be printed on mugs, they can be printed on tote bags, and they can be printed on high quality archival paper, like this one right here, which is a gicle. Um, when you print it on high quality archival paper, the word archival basically means that it's not going to turn yellow or get crusty or break apart uh, because there's no acid in the paper and it's the acid that breaks apart paper, which is why newsprint is very crumbly and old magazines will eventually fall apart, but gicle is printed on acid-free paper, which is archival, they shouldn't. I'm not sure how long they will last, but hopefully through your lifetime and maybe the next the next one after that. Um, the the gicles that I have behind me here were from uh, the show, the um, Art of Realism show that I was in at the airport, Cleveland Hopkins Airport, last summer, and it was there for six months. And it was amazing how many people saw the show. This was a time when people were still traveling and, you know, people were going to the airport and they were snapping selfies. And, you know, people came out of the woodworks to, you know, snap selfies of themselves with my work because they recognized it or they recognized my name. And it was really a very, you know, very good reach. Um, one of the reasons why I have all these gicles of the work from the airport was because the um, the constraints of the show were were very um, were very rigid, the, all the work had to fit into thirty by thirty matted frames that they had there, and so it, paintings that were larger than that or paintings that were on stretcher strips couldn't fit into there. So I decided to go the gicle route. This is the first time that I'd ever had gicles made of my work. I had always been resistant because I wasn't sure how well they would come out. I was like stunned and amazed how beautifully some of these came out. You can zoom in a little bit here. The, the quality, and this is actually, I think even larger than the original, than the original uh, painting, um, but it's like you have the painting right here in your house. It's, they're really, really high quality. And I do pat myself on the back a little bit because gicles are made from photos like 
high quality photos and I shoot my own photos. So I'm very happy that the photos that I shot also translated really well into giclés. So um, some artists do giclés in editions, like where they might do 25 and it's a limited edition or 50 or 100. Um, I don't do it that way uh, because generally for me, when people want a giclé, it's always a different one. So I do them custom, custom to order. So if you want a giclé of any of these paintings or any of my paintings, I will do a custom one for you. It won't be the only one because if somebody else asks for one, then they'll get, they're going to get a custom one too. But um, so far, they're still pretty rare, rare breed because I've only ever created like one to three giclés of something. Um, but one of the uh, one of the lovely things about the giclés is that it it's smaller than the actual painting, and you can have this beautiful you know piece of figurative art in your home at a very much lower lower budget than you know purchasing purchasing the original a fun thing that some artists do with giclés is now i'm going to show you this little book here that i've been collecting is they'll do these teeny tiny giclés um where they'll send them as little promotional or gift pieces and they're higher quality this one is by judy brandon who i have a piece of her work in her collection um, they're just on higher quality paper than just sending a photograph, like a glossy photograph of one of their paintings. And um, I just, I love collecting these. I, this one is by Erin Anderson. I think I got this through Poets Artists, which is um, a, uh, a artistic Patreon page where you can uh, basically subscribe to it. And that's one of the ways that you can support artists is by subscribing to their Patreon page or their GoFundMes. Um, and sometimes you'll get fun little, little gifts like this. Like they'll send little, nice little tiny giclés as sort of a reward for, you know, being a, being a good patron. You might even get them from galleries too where you've collected work. And you can frame these up. You can frame them in gorgeous frames, do a wall full of small like I do over there on the, you know, on the stairs. So those are real special giclés. Another special giclé that is not, not one of mine, but I'm so glad it's in my collection, is this beautiful piece by Natalia Fabia. Um, Natalia painted this of her daughter. It's a portrait of her daughter. And I first saw the original at uh, the Portrait Society of America conference. And because it was a um, finalist in the uh, international show. And that's a, probably one of the most, um, you know, prestigious Holy Grail shows that I've always wanted to get into. And, you know, where it's like, thousands and thousands of entries and only 20 of them end up in the finalist room and this beauty by Natalia Fabia ended up in the finalist room um, and the painting is called or the, the, the original painting is called I'm okay it's of her daughter um, one of the things that I loved about it is that she, she she's a master painter she's a really really good painter and this self-restraint where the the whole face is in shade she the whole thing is in shade and it's all backlit and yet there's a lot of form and a lot of personality and because it's a really high quality beautiful gicle i feel like i actually have the painting in my home normally i keep this in my studio because you know it's one of the things that inspires me uh but i brought it downstairs here to you know for the someday my prince will come episode and, okay, I'm going to move along to the next part because prints are not all giclés. There's a whole different type of animal, which is the hand-pulled print. It's completely different from giclés. Hand-pulled prints are basically where an artist uses a printing press and, pull, and does each print by hand. I'm going to illustrate the the concept of how those prints work using the example of my son's, this is his sixth grade art project, 
where he did a, um, a woodcut print. Basically, what he did was there was a block of wood and he carved the bunny into the wood. And wherever he carved away, the ink doesn't stick. Wherever it stayed raised, the ink sticks to it. And that's the principle behind printing is that you, as the artist, treat a plate, which could be made of wood or metal or you know copper or stone, um, in such a way as certain parts will have allow the ink to stick to it and other parts will resist the ink. So in a woodcut print like this, the raised parts that did not get carved are what the ink sticks to. So when you put your paper onto it and you burnish it and then you pull the paper off, you get the ink, the ink comes off and the impression is the, whatever it was on the raised parts. So that's basically the concept behind all printmaking is making it so that the ink sticks to certain parts instead of other parts. Um, the exact opposite is this beautiful intaglio print, which is also a hand pulled print by artist Marv Smith. He is um, an archived artist at the Artist Archives of the Western Reserve, and that was actually where I got this print, um, which I loved. It was, you know, I love the, the figurative component of it. All these are figurative prints here today. And because it had, it, it just had this sweet tenderness to it. Um, my son actually said that it reminded him of a Goya print from his prints about, you know, the, the tragedies of war. And I can, I can totally see that. Um, an intaglio print is the opposite of a woodcut print where the scratching, you would do your drawing and scratching into a um, metal plate. And since he's got, he's got some big areas with different shades of gray in them, that I'm, I believe he has used acid to etch away at the, at the plate. Um, and in an Italian, in an Ital, intaglio plate, the ink goes into the holes. Wherever you've scratched in, that's where the ink sticks to, not the raised parts. So then when you make your impression, you actually get an, a, it's a backwards impression of the scratches and the marks that you've made, not the reverse of the marks that you've made. So, um, so that's why I, I loved, loved this one. And uh, he did not number and sign it or anything, so I'm not sure what the addition situation is, but, um, but he did get, a, there's a stamp on the back, which is another way that printers, um, printmakers, you know, designate their, their work and sign their work. Now, I'm gonna skip along a little bit here to, these are some prints by Liz Moggins. Liz Moggins is a rock star artist, mover and shaker in the Cleveland area. She is the one of the founders of the Hand Journal, which is this Cleveland's only art magazine. And this this week, um, or this whatever, the summer episode, or the summer issue, not episode, uh, the summer issue is all about the COVID crisis and how it has impacted the art community. Um, there's actually even, believe it or not, a little article about my Zanesville show um, and everything that happened as a result of the COVID stuff. But you know all about that because you've been watching living figuratively. But the article also talks about how the COVID crisis really did kind of hatch living figuratively. So that, that's pretty cool. But this print um, is by Liz Moggins. And um, this one, the, uh, the process is soft ground etching, which is another hand, you know, hand pulled printmaking, printmaking method. Soft ground etching is where you have a hard plate and then you coat it with some kind of a soft goo. I don't even know what the substance is, but then you do your carving and your drawing into the soft goo. And then when the soft goo dries and you ink up the plate, the ink goes in wherever you've drawn and then that becomes, that. that is what you print from. And you know, you put your paper down and you get the impression. So whatever you've scratched in, comes up 
as, as your as your drawing. This print right here also includes Shin Kole, which is another thing I'm going to define for you. Shin Kole is literally translated as um, tissue glue, and it's where you can take a, a piece of paper, tissue paper or some kind of lightweight paper, and physically bond it during the printing process, you bond it to the print. And I'm thinking this white dress that she made, she cut into that shape and she gave Hot Chick, which is what this is called, she gave Hot Chick her white dress. And I wonder if you can guess why I even bought a print called Hot Chick. I thought that would be, would be fun. Liz told me that the, the um, the sort of the concept and thinking behind Hot Chick was that at first, you know, when you first hear it, Hot Chick sounds like a really good compliment, but it's a little bit of a loaded compliment, which is why she's got these actual flames coming out of her. And I'm thinking Liz took a lighter and did some, you know, some cool stuff. This is a, a limited edition here. It's a very small edition. There were only four of these. Um, and I can't remember now whether I have, oh, I have number one. So I don't know who has the other three, but I hope hot chicks have them. Um, Liz Moggins also, in addition to being founder of the Can Journal, she is also founder of Zygote Press, uh, along with Bellamy Prince. They co-founded it together. And Bellamy, Bellamy Prince, her last name ends with a Z. It's kind of a really a very fortuitous last name to have as a printmaker. Um, so she and Bellamy founded Zygo Press Print Cooperative, which I'm gonna tell you a little more background. Uh, printers, printmakers have different considerations than many other artists with different art forms. Um, so you really need to have, because you're working with a print, an actual printing press, you need to have access to this printing press. And these old printing presses that you do the hand, you know, it's like these giant heavy, I don't know, they weigh two tons. I don't even know how much they weigh. They're like super heavy. You don't even want them in your house because your house might not even support them. Um, and they're very expensive and they're old and they're rare. And um, it's really nice to have someplace to go where you can share the expense and inconvenience and space of using these printing presses. So a print cooperative where, like Zygo, where there's a bunch of different types of printing presses all set up there, along with printing mentors there that can you know, help you and show you how to use different things, is such a valuable, wonderful thing for the printmaking community. Um, it's also a valuable thing for the general art community because they really try to do a lot of outreach stuff uh, a bunch of years ago, they, in fact, I think they still do this. Um, they did something called the Monothon, where um, where artists from other disciplines will are invited to come and create monoprints at Zygo Press with a mentor printmaker, so that you know you learn the process and you learn how to do it, and to you know bring your own creativity to the printmaking world and to take away what you've learned back to your own art world. You know, it's like this cross-pollination of, of art, which happens in Cleveland, which is wonderful. Um, and which is why I can't wait to read this episode, this issue of Can Journal to see how different, you know, art venues have, you know, weathered the, weathered the COVID, COVID crisis. Um, I am going to finish up with Liz's other print, which was kind of the inspiration for calling this particular episode, Someday My Prince Will Come. Um, she is saying, I don't wanna watch any more Disney videos. This one's also a soft ground etching with the Shin Kole and is probably the, uh, the pink right there that was the bonded to you know, make her lovely little pink dress. This one, Liz told me the, um, the theory behind it or the uh, concept behind it and Liz, I love, one of the things I love about all of Liz's work, she, she notices humanity. She notices people and the things people do and the things that make people tick and our human tendencies and foibles. Whether she's doing it through abstracts, which she does, whether she's doing it through prints, you know, like figurative prints like this, 
um, whether whether she's doing it through her word printmaking. She's got a lot of word printmaking that it, it's it's like really clever. It's not just you know oh um, you know live laugh love and sort of the classic stuff like that. Um, it's it, it's like really the just cool pithy sort of word plays and stuff that um, that also are really cool to you know have in your home. But um, what she was thinking with the Disney Princess one is that is the myth of perfect parenthood. So that like for instance, when before you have kids, you think you know oh my children will never have pop tarts for dinner, and I'll make my own homemade baby food out of the the homemade out of the homegrown kale that I grow in the yard, and they're gonna love it, and they're gonna rake, and when they get older they're gonna rake for the neighbors and they're, they're not going to watch video games or anything like that um but then you know reality hits and come to find then you're starting to force them to watch the disney movies uh so that you can have margaritas with your friends on the porch um which i can you know i can relate to that um in my childhood though nobody ever had to force me to watch princess movies at all because i love princess movies as evidenced by you know, my little TV references to the specials. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight for Living Figuratively. Be sure to come back next week for the um, episode called Taking It to the Max. It's the Max Ginsburg episode, which I'm really looking forward to talking all about the artist Max Ginsburg. So same bad time, same bad channel. Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Dude, look what I found in the driveway. <laughs> My prince did come. <laughs>